31, let's take a look at composition of functions. We're going to look at composition of functions and talk about their domains. So if f and g are functions, then the composite function or a composition of f and g is defined by, and you see this symbol here, right? You have f, you have a, a little circle, a hollow circle, g of x, right? And then we're going to define it to be f evaluated at g of x. And a lot of the times when we say this out loud, we say g of f of x. And I, I want to make a distinction here that this is not multiplication. There's not an implied multiplication symbol in between the f of g and the x. This is function notation. So in the same way that if, if I just remove these, or if I focus in on the g of x here, there is no multiplication symbol implied between the g and the x. That is function notation. We say g of x. So let me just make sure I specify there is no multiplication involved here. All right, so this is function composition and that, that little circle that's hollow, that, that's, that means something to us in math. We know that means compose the functions. Do f of g of x. Okay, now the domain of this function, it's the set of all numbers x in the domain of g, so in the domain of your innermost function. I want you to take a look. We're always gonna look at the, the innermost function first. All right, and then you, it sounds kind of silly, but then you F it. All right, so the domain of F of G is this set of all numbers X in the domain of G, so all in the innermost function, such that G of X is in the domain of F. So we will work ourselves out, all right? We will start with G of X, figure out what its domain is, and then apply that and see what's viable with F of X. Okay, so if I wanna kind of have a graph or like a little flow chart here, you will start with the innermost parentheses. What was that x value? Or, or was it a letter? But let's say it was a number. Take that number, plug it into the g function, get a number back out. That now becomes your new input value that you're gonna input into the f function. And whatever you get back out is f of g of x. So when it comes to composing functions, start innermost x value, g it, take that g value, that becomes your new input value, and then f it. All right, and you don't have to go in this order. There's as many function compositions as you want. So you could do g of f of x, which we will in the next example, right? And you could actually compose as many functions as you want. So you can go nuts. You could do g of f of f of g. I don't know that I'd recommend it, but it would be g of f, what did I say, of f of g of x, how many, gosh, I have to count. I think I need one, I think I need that many more, right? So you can go nuts and compose as many as you want. We'll primarily stick to two or three. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna scooch the paper up and we're gonna practice this. Um, oops, and, and one thing I, I wanna mention, this domain situation, uh, it is a little convoluted, all right? And we're gonna unpack that in later examples. So for right now, I'm just gonna get us through the mechanics of this part, but I want you to hear that I will come back and address the domain of F and G. Uh, I just wanna do it at a little bit later, with a little bit later example. So let me scoot this up. And if you heard me saying oops for a moment, it's because when my printer printed, the X didn't really come out well here. So we have two functions that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at F of X, which is the square root of X plus four, and g of x, which is two, of x, two over x. And both of these functions have domain issues, right? We've talked about our three domain issues in math where you have um, fractions that you have to worry about. You have to worry about radicals and logarithms. You do have a fraction here. You have a radical here. They both have domain issues. And like I said, I will address the domain issues in later examples. For right now, I'm just gonna work through some of the mechanics and we're gonna take a look at composing these functions. So we'll start with uh, our, uh, just a basic example. Let's find f of g of two, all right? And for every example, every part of example three, there aren't any domain issues with the numbers I've chosen. So an x value of two and five, they don't have any issues. You can see you could plug two into this fraction and you can plug two into the radical. You can plug five into the fraction and five into the radical. I would have a, a tougher time 
finding f of g of zero, all right? Zero is a problem, right? And certain numbers over here are problems, but I intentionally didn't pick that for example three. All right, so let's practice this. This, I would do f of g of two. And I'm gonna start with the innermost function and work myself out. So I'm gonna look at g of two first. So for all I care right now, I'm gonna look at g of two. So two is my input. Let's see what we would get back out. So if I did, in these parentheses, g of two, that would be two over two, okay? So the output there is one. So I plugged two into g, I got one back out. Now this one will become my new input, but now I'm gonna go into the f function, all right? So if I plug one in to the f function, I'm gonna have the square root of one plus four, and that ultimately leaves me with the square root of five. So I find out here that f of g of two is equal to the square root of five. And if you want to write it this way, if you like the circle, the little open circle notation better, great. These are both acceptable answers. All right, so let me write here, great. You know, I'll put either answer is great. So you don't have to write both, pick a notation you like. put a little separation there. So now I want to do f of g of 5. So let's see what we have. All right, so I'm going to start inside and work my way out. Now g of 5 means put 5 in, at, or put 5 as my input value, but input it into the g function. So this is going to become f of, well, if I plug 5 in here, I'm going to get 2 fifths back out. So that output from G is now going to become my input into F. So F of 2 fifths would be the square root of 2 fifths plus 4. Okay, well, this is all fine and good. That's, that's my, my solution so far, but this isn't simplified. Right? We can't take the square root of a frac. We can't have a square root in a denominator. Math folks don't like that. So I need to go ahead and add these fractions together. And you can do this on your calculator using math frac. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it by hand so that I have 2 fifths. I'm gonna need common denominators. I can rewrite four as 20 fifths. Now when I add those fractions together, this is going to be the square root of 22 fifths. Because that is division under that radical, I can distribute the radical. You're allowed to distribute roots or any kind of exponent over multiplication and division. If your radicand only has multiplication and division, it's fine. It's when your radicand has addition or subtraction that you can't distribute that radical. Um, and then again, we don't like having radicals in the denominator, so I'm gonna rationalize the denominator by multiplying a root five over root five. So my denominator is now five. 22 times five is the square root of 110. And I can't simplify this. This is made up of a two, an 11, and a five, so there's nothing to simplify there. So again, here, I would know that f of g evaluated at five, right? Not multiplication, but evaluated at five is a square root of 110 over five, okay? All right. Let's try going the other direction. Let's do g of f of two. And so that we can see all of this, I'm gonna just scoot this up a bit so I can have a little bit of work room down here. And I'm gonna to have to scoot it up eventually, but uh, I'll do that once we reference these functions. So here we go, we're gonna do g of f of two here. All right, so if I wanna do g of f of two, start with your innermost function. My input, my input value is two. I'm going to put that into f of x. So this will become the square root of two plus four, which is gonna be the square root of six. All right, so I'm gonna have g of the square root of two plus four, which will ultimately be g of root six. All right, now root six becomes my input, and I input it into g, so that will become two over root six. All right, and since I'm running out of space, but at least I've used the information up here, I'm gonna scooch this up just so we have some room. Okay, so I'm, I'm in the same predicament I was in part B. I can't have a radical in the denominator, so I'm gonna go ahead and rationalize this and multiply by root six over root six. 
So as I'm working through this, I'm going to have 2 root 6 over 6. We have 2 over 6 here. Because they're being multiplied, I can go ahead and simplify it. So ultimately, I'm going to have the square root of 6 over 3. All right, so that would mean for this problem that g of f of 2 is the square root of 6 over 3. All right, let me move this back down so we can get the functions back in view. Okay, now I want to do g of f of 5. All right, innermost function, we want f of 5. So I'm going to put 5 into f. Oh, that's going to be nice. If you put 5 into f, that's going to be a nice integer. So I'm going to do g of the square root of 5 plus 4, which is like saying g of the square root of 9, which will ultimately be g of 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. And so now I want to take that 3, which was the output value from f of 5, but it's going to become my input value to 3. When I plug 3 into g of x, I'm looking at 2 thirds. And that's, oops, let me scooch that up now. It's probably the nicest option we have in these four examples or these four parts. There's nothing I need to do. So here I could say that g of f of 5 is equal to 2 thirds. Okay. Now when we get to the next page, we're going to look at composing functions graphically and analytic, oh, excuse me, graphically and numerically. I just want to make sure I uh, reiterate, this is an analytical approach. So when you hear me refer to an analytical approach, and we've done this before, all right, but the analytical approach means I'm giving you formulas to plug into, to analyze. We're going to do function composition graphically, where you don't have a formula to plug into, you just have graphs from which to read your y values. We're also going to do a numerical approach, where you don't have formulas or graphs, you just have tables of values, and we're still going to look at composition of functions. All right, so that's your first look, or I hope your review look at composition of functions. Let's go practice them graphically and numerically. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.